sharp and keen. I can do anything. Welcome one and all to Dungeon Dives. In this video, we'll be going over the Wailing Caverns. So without further ado, let's just get right into it and go talk about some quests. So first, we'll start out in Ratchet, and we're going to pick up trouble at the docks. Then we're going to get and complete Raptor Horns from the Goblin over here, so you can pick up Smart Drinks. Druids of the Fang is the main quest you want for this instance, but getting it can be a pain. So strap in and get ready to take some notes. First, talk to this cow in the crossroads. He'll go tell you to do Forgotten Pools, where all you gotta do is just swim through this lake. Then you gotta go back to the crossroads, and he'll tell you to go to the Stagnant Oasis and use a quest item on the fissure in the ground. Oh. Uh... Oops. Then you gotta go back to the crossroads, then go back to the Stagnant Oasis and kill some Oasis Snapjaws. Go back to the cow in Crossroads, and then he'll tell you to go talk to a cow in Thunder Bluff. And he'll tell you to talk to another cow in Thunder Bluff in the same tent. And hey, there you go, now you have the Druids of the Fang quest, which offers some great rewards. While you're in Thunder Bluff, also pick up the Serpent Bloom quest from this cave. Now for the last two quests, Blizzard decided, hey, where is the most random, convoluted spot we can put two quests that no normal person will ever find? The last two quests are in the eye socket of the Wailing Cavern's entrance. To get to this hidden spot, you need to climb up the mountains, scale down it, Hop down and enter the hidden lair where you can grab the Deviate Hide and Deviate Eradication quests. Okay, now you have all the quests and you can finally enter- Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, one second. I know around half of you are going to be wondering what the hell the Alliance does for this dungeon. So the Alliance can only do four out of the six available quests for this dungeon. Combine this with the long hike to even get to the dungeon and they have to deal with horde players in the process and it just makes for the situation to not really be worth it. Then again, whatever bro, it's your life, so do what you want to do. Alright, back to the video. Enter the caverns. So you'll want to be around level 17 to 23 and group up at the entrance of the cave. The first thing we're going to check off our list is trouble at the docks. When you enter the caverns, hold left until you find this little cave. There will be a stealth goblin you need to kill. This is also a good time to mention that there are Serpent Blooms all around the cave. You need these for the Serpent Bloom quest. Each person will need 10, so 50 in total for the whole group. Make sure you are grabbing these whenever possible so you can finish the quest. You don't want that unspoken competition for seeing who grabs the flower first. Keep holding left and you'll eventually enter the main room. In this room, you'll have a chance to find two different rares. Trigger the Lashers located in the water. I didn't find him while recording, but trust me, he's there. The other rare spawn is Bowen, and both these rares are pretty easy to kill, so why not just check up to see if they're even there. Now you can walk through the portal and do the actual dungeon. You'll be greeted into the dungeon by this Taran. He can grant you a Mark of the Wild buff if you talk to him. Work your way down the pathway and you'll enter the first room. We're looking for the first boss, Lady Anaconda, who has a chance to spawn in these four locations. She has a sleep she can cast that can be dispelled, a heal, lightning bolt, and a thorns effect. She drops a 10 slot bag, some white shoulders, and the belt of the fang. Combine all the pieces of the fang armor together and you too can be a flamboyant druid with some added stat bonuses. 
Drop down and go west. It's a pretty straightforward pathway that leads to the next boss, but stop, wait a minute, fill my cup, put some liquor in it. First, we need to talk about the most common trash mob in this instance. Druids of the Fang have the same sleep, healing, and lightning bolt effects that our first boss had, but can also turn into a serpent instead of having the thorns effect. By themselves, these mobs aren't all that scary, but in groups where multiple ones are all healing and CCing your party and casting spells, you can see how this gets out of hand. Focus on having some party members CC some of the mobs if you're pulling multiple. I strongly recommend having an off healer in your group just in case your healer does get slept. Continue down the path and you'll face Lord Cobrahan. Focus down the snake adds around him first, and he has a heal, sleep, poison, and lightning bolt. Oh yeah, he can also turn into a snake. He drops the Druid of the Fang leggings, robes of the moccasin, and Cobrahan's grasp. Drop down and backtrack your way to the main room. Chances are you'll run into Kresh. He's not really a boss, he's just a poor defenseless turtle you can kill for a shield. There's a 90% chance you'll get a crappy white one and a 10% chance you'll get a rare one. After committing turtle murder, you'll enter the horrible maze of the Wailing Caverns. Okay, I'm gonna try and make as much sense of this as possible. Go left to see if the rare fairy dragon has spawned. It drops a kick-ass wand and the face scale cloak. Continue down the path and hold left to kill Lord Pythus. He has a heal, lightning bolt, thunderclap, and a sleep. But you know what, I bet these elves could just like, have a lot more fun if they just help people sleep rather than just hanging out in some weird musky cave. The cats nestle close to their kittens. The lambs have laid down with the sheep. You're cozy and warm in your bed, my dear. Please go the fuck to sleep. He drops the stinging viper mace in the armor of the fang. Keep heading left, and when you reach the rock spires, go... Hey, guess what? Keep going left. Now, despite all his rage, the next boss, Scum, is still in his cage. Oh my god, that was such a bad joke. He has a chain lightning effect, so stay spread. He drops the tail spike dagger and the lizard scale cloak. Keep going left, and you'll finally make it out of the maze with a jump that will turn boys into men. The Leap of Faith is what this dungeon is well known for. If you fall off, you'll have to run through the maze all over again. Hey bro, are you coming or what? Y y yeah guys, I got it. Just... Alright, here we go. Huh. Uh, no, no! you fools! <laughs> Alrighty, you're almost done. Lord Suprentis is going to be the last lord you fight. He has a lightning bolt, heal, and a sleep. What a surprise. He drops gloves, a savage trotters, venom strike, and the fang boots. Now you've probably already seen him, but if you turn left, you'll see a very big boy. Despite being big, he doesn't do much. He has an entangling roots effect, and that's about it. He drops the seed cloud buckler, living root, and the spored cape. All right, we're in the home stretch now, okay? All you need to do is just drop down the hole behind the big boy and head back to the entrance of the dungeon. The grand finale for this dungeon is an escort quest. You only have one shot at this, so don't mess it up. Make sure you're all buffed up and ready to go. Talk to the Tarn to start the escort. He'll start walking towards the room of Nalorex, and Raptors will spawn on his way there. And there's also one point where he stops to like wiggle his fingers and then some snakes spawn. Once he enters the room, he'll start healing his sleeping butt buddy. Waves of adds will swarm around their location and it's your job to stop them. The first wave is a bunch of serpents that you should kill as fast as possible before wave 2 pops. If you do have this downtime, it's critical that you guys focus on regening health and mana. Wave 2 is a bunch of slimes. It's super easy to get overwhelmed and wipe here, so make sure you got your potions and your CCs ready. If you manage to survive the second wave, the last boss will emerge. He has a fear, stun, and sleep, so just be ready just in case your healer or your tank is affected by one of these spells. Mutanus drops the slime encrusted pads, the deep fathom ring, and the mutant scale breastplate. You may have killed the final boss, but our journey is not over just yet. Pick up the glowing shard and start the quest. Say goodbye to the godforsaken caverns and make your way back to Ratchet. Talk to the goblin by the flight master, then go back to the top of the hill where the Wailing Caverns is located. This tarn will tell you to go back to Thunder Bluff and talk to the tarn that you talked to for the Druids of the Fang quest. If you're Alliance, you're going to have to go all the way back to Darnassus. Turn in the quest and breathe. You've finally finished everything for the Wailing Caverns. Pat yourself on the back 
and enjoy all the sweet loot you got. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you all for watching my video. Huge thank you to Lagging Balls and June Laster for supporting me on Patreon, and you can too if you visit my link down in the description. You can also check out my Twitter down there as well. Like, subscribe, and let me know what dungeon you guys want to see next. I love you all, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.